for joining us on Market Guru. I'm Harsha Subramaniam. I'm sitting in for Vivek Law. My guest today is Nirmal Jain, Chairman of India Infoline. Nirmal, many thanks for joining in. First things first, we've seen some positive news coming out of the EU summit. What have you made of it? Is the reaction rather exaggerated or do you think this is sets the pace for things to come? It's a positive development, there's no doubt about it. But it doesn't solve the problem permanently. So for the time being, it has given the given the region to market for uh, uh, given to markets for railing, and that is what we have seen in Asian markets uh, all over the world. Uh, but I think EU summit uh, uh, day two is today, and uh, beyond this also we have to see that how these countries are able to address their uh, deficit, their debt, and uh, you know how they are able to restore growth. Because unless they do this, there's no permanent solution to this kind of problem. Because unless the economy start uh, reducing their debt burden, which is the difficult part, which is the hard part, and therefore I think that these are all, uh, you know, these are all. Uh, I, mean, I mean, this kind of rally can last for a few days, but it can't sustain forever. From an Indian standpoint, uh, Nirbal, I mean, how much of this has a material impact, or is it purely a sentiment driver? See, it's very interesting because quite a few positive factors have converged in India as well. So, on one hand, you get a, a good news from EU summit, and then there's a petrol price cut. Uh, then there's a change in finance ministry and you know people are hoping that prime minister uh, whose image has taken quite a beating in the last three years will do everything to uh, restore it and you know salvage it somewhat you know, before the elections uh, so he'll go uh, quicker on reform because there's so much of media you know analysts economists mm. and everybody's pressure that you know we are not doing anything there's a policy paralysis mm. and of course he's listening his you know his is happening around him mm. uh, so there's a hope that he'll do something which is uh, quick and dramatic uh, so hopes have built up all over, uh, and I think, uh, but in this, you know, and also monsoon mm. has been a bit slow in the month of June. But you know, uh, now there's a department forecast that it'll make up in July. Uh, so these are all technical factors, you know, which are converging at this point in time. We see that market has rallied today. Uh, just to push that point a little further, you know, we've saw some clarity coming on on the GAR guidelines yesterday. Uh, the prime minister has made, or, or rather, him stepping in and issuing some measures on the power sector has also improved sentiment. Do you see the overall turd, the tide turning a bit or do you think it's early days? The tide has already turned a bit, mm. uh, but uh, it is very premature to conclude that we'll get out of our woods or the problems like capital goods, infra and power sector mm. will get resolved or they'll show some dramatic uh, improvement of growth in the next two years. Mm. Because the coalition politics remain as they are. Uh, and I think so there'll be more statements and it's very difficult to imagine that how government will be really pushed through mm. uh, things which it hasn't done in say last eight years and more so in last three years. Uh, but still, if there is something is done, then the negative sentiment is contained for the time being. Mm. The slide is contained and you know, investors will start looking for stocks. Uh, you know, and in this kind of market, market is fairly valued, it's 14 times. So, you know, if you really look at the historical uh, market multiple, then they have range you know in a very pessimistic scenario around 10 11 times mm. and in a very optimistic you know bull phase around 18 times mm. so markets aren't dirt cheap they are fairly valued but they aren't very expensive either so you know the direction of the market will again be uh, therefore influenced by policy uh, uh, whichever way manmohan singh is able to take it forward and you know that is what we may, uh, need to be seen Let's talk about the rupee. You know, <coughs> despite all of this, the rupee's weakness continues. We precariously poised about 57. Um, do you see that weakness continuing? Are there are these factors that you're mentioning? Will that give some credence to the rupee, not just for today, but but in the near term? I think for rupee, the key variable is crude oil prices, mm. and as crude oil They've prices have they come off, yeah. they should remain low and they should come down further. If that happens, then you know there's a huge. Uh, a relief for rupee and you know, rupees fall should be further and you know, should not happen now. Mm. But you know, from a structural point of view, India is the only country which runs current account deficit mm. in entire Asia or all emerging market. Mm. And uh, government has to look at long term because you know there's always a dependence on capital inflows. See, when you have a when your imports are more than exports, and even including software, obviously you are dependent on capital inflows. Correct. Which can happen by form by way of debt or equity. So if you don't have a clear policy on FDI, if you don't have a clear policy on ECB. And there's a flip-flop, and there is a political, you know, vested interest that you know pull it back. Then you always run a risk because whenever the sentiment turns adverse and the capital flows are, mm. uh, you know, they reduce, then you have a problem. Uh, but over medium to long term, I think rupee will slide by four to five percent per annum. Mm. You know what had happened in the interim period? If you see rupee had appreciated, which was uh, really not a good thing to happen because we were still running current account deficit or a trade deficit, but capital inflows were big. Mm. 
Mm. Uh, maybe I think going forward, RBI will be more cautious. So if you know the they won't allow rally to take place just because of capital inflows, and they'll right. probably try and build up reserves a lot more than what they are today. Uh, having said this, you know at least if the crude oil price uh, softens, a uh, rupee will uh, you know not slide further. You spoke about capital flows, Nirmal. Mm -hmm. Do you expect fund flows to come into equities to emerging markets? Uh, do you see India being a recipient of of greater fund flows if you're seeing the global environment ameliorating a wee bit? Uh, yes, uh, but with a caution that it won't be significant. It mm -hmm. won't be a huge. It's not like those 2007 when you know you see a lot of money coming in. Mm -hmm. The macro factors in India still are you know is, is not looking very good. Because the economic, uh, the GDP growth will slow down to 6% and there are some more conservative analysts or pessimists who think that you know, can go down to 4% also. Mm. And uh, with this, we'll also see there'll be tremendous stress on banks uh, because, you know, this is all. So if you start taking some steps now, mm. the impact on GDP and you know, your fiscal deficit inflation will start appearing after 12 to 18 months. Mm. So even if whatever he does, the numbers for next two, three quarters will not look that great. Mm. Even corporate earn, corporate earnings, you know, say Infosys or LNT or Bail, uh, you know, they are not like you know, they'll they'll find it difficult even to meet the uh, guidance or expectations, and therefore uh, next two three quarters will be cautious. So it won't be a runaway market. It's not a market when FI money will come in and chase stocks at any valuations. Mm. There'll be more stock specific, but some capital can come in, and more importantly, if FDI policy is uh, you know is clarified. Hmm. and is made more pragmatic, then we can see some action there and which will be good from a longer term perspective. See, FI money is hot money, you know, it's a stock hmm. market, it comes in and goes out. But what India needs is a very clear policy so that it can attract long term sustainable FDI hmm. and a very clear policy on ECB front also. Hmm. We did see some measures announced by the Reserve Bank of India in terms of uh, both foreign for FI investments in, in the debt side, uh, on expanding on the ECB side. Do you see this have, as having any material difference at all? No, these are all small technical majors. You know, you release five billion dollars, ten tweaking. billion dollars. It's only tweaking. Mm. Uh, so as I said, that the key variable which is beyond beyond you know, our government as well as RBI's control is crude oil prices. Right. So if you are lucky, crude oil prices come down. If they come down further, we benefit. Mm. Corporate earnings. Mm. Do you expect that to be weak this quarter? Yes, this quarter can be difficult for corporates. You know, many sectors, till now, consumer discretionaries were running very well. You know, they were, you know, they were showing good growth. Mm. But now we hear cautious, uh, you know, uh, sort of indications from many corporates. You mm. see Tata Motors plant has been shut down, one of the plants. And then even Titan has indicated that jewelry sales are slowing down. So discretionary, we see a slowdown. Mm. At this point in time, FMCG is still going strong. But I think if monsoon disappoints, then there will be some concern in this quarter, next quarter. And, on, and that sector is very richly valued already. Mm. And therefore, corporate earnings, you know, larger sectors, which is capital goods, infra, banks, hmm. uh, there will be pressure. Um, any, any ray of optimism in any of the corporate side that you're seeing, you know, do you see perhaps IT doing better because, because yeah. of the rupee? IT and pharma, pharma in particular. Hmm. In fact, another development which has been missed, you know, in this entire EU, this thing is that uh, US government ha is moving ahead with the health bill, which will hmm. include uh, 50 million Americans and probably, you know, increase the health budget. Mm. which is some 2.6 or 2.7 trillion dollars to 4 trillion dollars. Mm. That's a huge opportunity for Indian pharma companies. And today, in fact, that, that is the reason that some of the pharma companies are up. Mm. So I think pharma sector has a long term, it's quite resilient. Mm. It's resilient to domestic economic, you know, those who are, you know, who have good earnings from, uh, from overseas. And also demand back home for pharma, you know, medicines is not so much dependent on, uh, uh, say, the economic environment or economic growth as such. Mm. So I think pharma sector should do well. This is one of few sectors that can deliver you 25% growth or 20-25% growth over five years compounded mm. uh, without too much of you know b b risk around it. And other than pharma, I think IT sector is also doing well. And mm. other than that, the third sector that we like uh, in terms of valuations as well as growth is cement. Mm. And there are also mid-cap stocks which are you know, attractively valued can make you know better investment choice. The investment spending outlook for corporates is, is still not resumed, Nirmal. You know, how big a concern is that for you? Um, and when do you see the investment pipeline coming back on track? Uh, and consequently, a related question is, how would you see that, you, you know, your own investment decisions in, in the capital markets from those companies' standpoint? I think investment, and I mean, what you said is very right, that, that investment cycle has not yet turned up. And it, again, is driven by sentiment as well as interest rate. Mm. And uh, that has a you know that has an impact on growth with a lag because mm. at the end of the day, 
whatever be your capital output ratio, you need capital to sustain GDP growth. Uh, yeah. And uh, that is impacted uh, one by you know, the policy uh, confusion, but more importantly, interest rates have been very high. Mm. And RBI has been very cautious in bringing down the interest rate. Mm. My view has been that, you know, that the purpose to control inflation mm. is what? Not that inflation by itself is some animal that we want to, you know, nobody. And what has happened is that historically or, you know, long term, uh, if inflation is a tax on poor mm. and when inflation is high, poor people vote against the incumbent government and that is why, you know, people mm. fear inflation. Mm. But what has happened is that whatever RBI does, it does not impact food prices or primary article prices. Mm. And that is what is more important from populist point of view uh, or even crude oil for that matter. So I think, you know, you go by classical or traditional theories that inflation is high, tighten the money, you know, reduce, increase the interest rate. That hasn't worked, you say? It hasn't worked and it's not going to work either. Mm. And but therefore, what, 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 the, what are the options before, before the Reserve Bank of India? It, it really can't do much when your fiscal side is not being helped. Nor is the supply side, isn't it? So at least if it can't do much to inflation, it mm. can do something positive to growth. Mm. So it can reduce interest rates more aggressively. Mm. It can reduce CRR and make you know money easily available for, as you asked the, your previous question, to help uh, revive the investment cycle. Mm. So I think, so it can't control fiscal deficit and that's a fact that unless government does something, you know, significant, the government's fiscal deficit uh, gets into government borrowings, which elbows out private borrowings. So these are factors mm. which are beyond the control of RBI. Mm. But if it agrees and it understands that your tight monetary policy and high interest rates are not helping inflation much. Right. So at least not, you know, try and do something positive on the growth side. Mm. So, you know, you know, you have two growth and inflation. Mm. So you can't do much on one, you know, mm. the, to contain the negative on one side. Mm. Then at least do some positive on the other side. Right. Um, we spoke uh, we spoke about oil for a wee bit. Um, they have come off, but do you expect that to be a determinant on how Reserve Bank is going to be defining its policy? Do you expect uh, perhaps the oil marketing companies to get some more relief? I think yes. I mean that see for us, crude oil is the largest item on our import bill, and mm. that will impact almost eighty percent of our petrol requirements are imported petroleum requirements. So therefore, uh, it will impact fiscal policy, monetary policy, government, RBI, everybody's thinking, and mm. there's no doubt about it. Mm. So as crude oil prices go down, there's some relief on not only current account deficit, but also fiscal deficit. Mm. Because, you know, you have a subsidy burden which can be eased. Mm. And uh, that actually will, you know, make them probably more, uh, you know, that will embolden them to take more uh, uh, growth-oriented, you know, steps which like cutting interest rate and things like that. What are you telling your clients now? Which pockets in the markets are worth investing in? As we discussed, that for, and we say that, you know, we have to have an asset allocation approach. So restrict your equity to 25-30% of your total portfolio for a typical uh, reasonable size HNI clan. Mm. Still be 40 to 50% in uh, debt and maybe around 10-15% in gold mm. and remaining can be real estate and everything. Mm. Within equity, again, we have a bit of a concentrated approach at this point in time. So we are saying that be overweight in pharma, IT and cement in that order. Mm. And other than that, uh, exposure to equity should be very stock specific. Mm. A any stock specific ideas that you can give us with? No, I think these sectors that we uh, discuss, you know, mm. they have quite a few good stocks and uh, we all know about it. Like say pharma sector, then you have uh, Sun Pharma, Dr. Reddy or, you know, uh, Tor and Lupin. If you go to IT, then again, mid-cap IT like KPIT or uh, this Mahindra Satyam. Mm. These are the good stocks. In cement, again, uh, you know, you have stocks like JK Lakshmi and, you know, these are attractively priced. And of course, uh, you have Sri Cement and, you know, Madras Cement and all of those. Mm. I think North Bay cement companies are doing better, you know, that's what our research is uh, of the view. Mm. So this is how a portfolio can be built. But the broader approach to portfolio, as I said, has to be asset allocation and uh, still we say 40 to 50 percent has to be in fixed income uh, security. My final question to you, Nirmal, you know, uh, over the last couple of days, we, ha we are seeing some positive sentiment coming in. We are actually seeing s some of the global brokerages talking about a 20, 22,000 Sensex level. Is it too early? What's the number that you have in mind? I would, if I had to put my bet, I'll still put on say 18, 19,000 by this year end, but still 20, 22,000 is not something which is far away or which is very mm. uh, too optimistic to be ruled out. It all depends on how Manmohan Singh now takes finance ministry's role and what he does on one hand and on the other hand, bit of luck on monsoon and crude oil. Nirmal Jain, always a pleasure having you with Thank us. You Many so thanks much. for joining Thank us. You. That's it on Market Guru. Many thanks for watching.